LV55 Media LLC presents Private Investigations Read Aloud, a chronological scene-by-scene read-through of the Private Investigations Book 1 and Book 2 novel for the viewing community. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. Private Investigator Sam Rosario Aquino yawns <sighs> after momentarily concentrating on the faint, rhythmical, chirping sounds of crickets coming from the bushes directly behind him, while he stands outside his vehicle leaning up against the driver's side door. Sam pulls his cell phone from his jacket, checks the time, and takes a deep breath. 4.17 a.m., he thinks. Sam places his phone back in his jacket and folds his arms across his chest. The chirping sounds immediately cease when a middle-aged man dressed in a t-shirt, pajama bottoms, and flip-flops walks up nearby, forcing Sam to briefly look behind himself. He and the man continue observing the steady stream of partygoers exiting a nearby private residence before the man finally speaks. Thank God that's finally over. Sam momentarily looks over his shoulder again towards the man. They've been at it all night, he quips. What time did it start, Sam asks, before looking towards the residence again. About 9.30 last night. Took him long enough to get here, he quips again. Sam and the gentleman continue watching party guests exiting the residence, some walking towards the nearby adjacent street, while others are being escorted in handcuffs towards multiple Metro Police Department squad cars and a police paddy wagon parked nearby within the residential cul-de-sac. Sam deducts some being arrested are likely the result of being caught violating curfew while being underage or drunk and disorderly. The man scoffs, now we can finally get some sleep around here, then walks away. Sam spots several party goers in handcuffs, one female in particular who is being separated and directed to sit on the curb directly underneath the street light. A police SUV rounds the corner, in, rounds the corner into the cul-de-sac driving slowly, then stops in the middle of the street approximately 30 yards from where Sam is standing. An officer exits the vehicle, walks over and joins several other officers standing in a semicircle, already in conversation. After several minutes, the officer pats one of the other officers on the shoulder and starts walking back towards the SUV. Hey, Jesse, Sam calls out, causing the officer to stop in his tracks and glance around confused. Over here, Sam briefly raises, raises his hand to catch the officer's attention. Jesse, the younger brother of a close family friend of Sam's, finally locates his voice and walks over towards him. Rosario, is that you? He quips. As he walks up smirking, he and Sam dap each other up. Hey, thanks for leaving me that voicemail. I see your intel is as good as ever. Hey, brother. What are you doing out here this time in the morning? I got a tip that one of my client's daughters might be here. Sam points towards a nearby vehicle. Spotted a car, he says. Jesse briefly looks in the direction, then back towards the police activity. You see her, he asks. Sam points towards the group of partygoers sitting underneath the streetlight. Yeah, the young lady in the white dress sitting on the curb in handcuffs, he says. Jesse calls out towards one of the officers standing in the semicircle. Dennis! Hey, Dennis! Come over here for a second. The officer in question walks over to where Sam and Jesse are standing. Jesse speaks in a low tone. Hey, this is my friend Sam. He's a PI. He's interested in the young lady, white dress and handcuffs, sitting on the curb. What do you have on her? Dennis briefly looks back at the handcuffed group, then towards Jesse. A little weed, a few pills, haven't processed those yet. Then Dennis clears his throat before speaking. <clears throat> we caught her with barely any clothes on in an upstairs bedroom in a rather compromising position with a 16-year-old male, he says, causing Sam to wince. Okay, thanks. As Dennis walks away, Jesse looks towards Sam. What's this about, Sam? Sam takes a deep breath. She's the daughter of some well-to-do clients, 
who've hired me to get her back into El Rey and keep this matter out of the press. She can't quite kick her demons. Jesse nods his head. I hear you. What do you want to do, he asks. I wonder if you could do me a favor and not arrest her, put her in your custody, and drive her over to El Rey. I'll follow you and process her in myself, since I'm personally known to the staff. You got it, Sam. Jesse, Jesse calls out towards Dennis again. Hey, Dennis! Girl in the white dress, put her in my vehicle. Thanks. Jesse nods his head in the direction of the young lady's vehicle. What about her vehicle? Tow truck's already on their way to take some cars to impound. Sam slightly waves his hand in front of his body. I'll let the parents worry about that, he says, causing Jesse to momentarily look towards the ground, then back towards Sam. Tell you what, Sam, I'll tell my guys not to ride up, ride up her vehicle, and you can make arrangements to come pick it up later. How's that? Jess, I owe you one. Thanks, Sam says. Jesse quickly changes the subject. By the way, how's that granddaughter of yours and her, and her partners doing, he asked. They got any upcoming tournaments? Not that I know of, Sam answers. How's Derek doing? Great. Christine? She's fine. Jesse briefly shakes his head. Damn, I wish those two were still together. They were like two peas in a pod. Jesse changes the subject again. Hey. I may need some help from you. What's that? Sam asks. I got volunteered to run the Metro Police Department's booth at this year's Filipino Festival. I'm looking for some volunteers. I would ask you, but you're too old, my friend. Both Sam and Jess, Jesse share a laugh. You think Megan and her quote crew would want to help out? Pass out some brochures and flyers? I'll make sure they, they get fed real good, he exclaims causing Sam to smirk. Jesse pulls out a business card and hands it towards Sam. Here, give this to Meg. Uh, I mean Jennifer. Both Sam and Jesse chuckle. Hey Sam, let me go back in here and wind this thing up so we can get out of here. Hey, when will I see a new detective, Sam remarks, causing Jesse to chuckle. Man, you got me. Haven't had time to take the test lately. Maybe next year. All right, Sergeant. I'm holding you to that. Hey, thanks, Jess. No problem, brother. As Jesse turns and walks towards the other officer, officers, Sam pulls his phone from his jacket pocket again, places a call, and waits. Yeah, it's me. I found her. Over at a house, over at a house party near State. The arresting officer agreed to take custody of her. We'll take her back to El Rey. I'll get her checked in and make sure the press doesn't find out. Okay, I gotta go. I'll call you when I'm done. Oh, I'll make arrangements to have her car brought back to your house later. You're welcome. To learn more about Sam Aquino and the many other characters involved in these mysterious, intriguing, suspenseful, and coincidental fiction stories, Purchase a copy of Private Investigations, Book 1 and Book 2, in one volume by visiting Doran's Publishing, available both in softcover and ebook formats, also available at Amazon Books and Barnes & Noble.